Welcome to Devils in the Details. I am your host, Annie DeGraw. Today joining us, we have Dean Jonathan Capel from the Watts College of Public Service and Community Solutions. Uh, Dean Capel will soon be leaving ASU to lead his own university. So today we're going to look back at the transformation of Watts College over the last decade and how it's impacted faculty, staff, students, and the community. Dean Capel, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Annie. It's good to be here with you. So I think the name of the college itself, the College of Public Service and Community Solutions, says a lot about the mission of the college. Can you talk us a little bit about uh, what Watts College means to you and perhaps how that's changed over the last 10 years? Yeah, well, let's start with the name, right? So that's the most obvious thing. When I got to, when I got to ASU in 2010, it was the College of Public Programs. Uh, it was a name that I think even a mother wouldn't love, especially. It was sort of this boring, not terribly descriptive thing. You Public programs, like, I don't know what it is. It sounds vaguely governmental, but beyond that, couldn't tell you much. And most people didn't even know what was in it. Uh, it was sort of, uh, people sort of disparagingly called it the College of Everything Else. Uh, and, uh, and, and I was puzzled by it, to be honest, because when I looked at it, I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I came to be head of the School of Public Affairs, right? So it's public policy, public administration, but then you had social work and you had criminology and criminal justice and community resource and development, things like nonprofit um, and tourism, economic development. I was like, wait a second, this is all about, it's all about community. It's all about, it's all about public service and, and making things better for the common good. I, I don't, I don't think it's the island of misfit toys. It, it makes a lot of sense to me, but, but there hadn't been, there hadn't been an articulation of that shared purpose. And I, you know, I'm proud to say that now, 11 years later, when we have a, a new name, obviously, the Watts College of Public Service and Community Solutions, I think everybody, not just in the college, everybody at ASU and everybody in the community has a really strong sense of what the Watts College is about. And we are, in some sense, you know, the, the prow of the ASU ship standing for the public service mission of the university and uh and so yeah i think it's i think it's pretty different than it was than it was uh, 10 11 years ago you brought up the renaming of the uh, college the watts college talk to me a little bit about how that renaming came about and perhaps what new initiatives were included in that renaming so the watts name uh comes from a $30 million donation from Cindy and Mike Watts, uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, people who grew up in the Maryvale section of Phoenix, you know, working class family. Uh, they didn't go to ASU. Uh, they didn't go to college, uh, frankly. Um, they made, they made uh, their fortune uh, with, uh, with hard work building Sun State uh, equipment rental into a billion dollar a year enterprise, um, but they've been strongly committed to the community the whole time that they were growing their business. They've been uh, philanthropic with a variety of organizations. They had given to ASU in the past, um, and so I built a relationship with them and I really came to appreciate that what they were passionate about was making a difference in the community. And so we quickly found this alignment between what animated them, uh, which is to use the wealth that they'd acquired to give back, to help other people, to give other folks a chance to be successful that they, the way they were, and what we were building in the College of Public Service and Community Solutions. It just lined up so well. And we were able to demonstrate to them that that investing in the college, investing in our students, investing in our work in the community was actually the most powerful way to fulfill their vision of making Phoenix a stronger place. And so what we've been able to do with the generous investment of, uh, of Mike and Cindy Watts is, first of all, create a set of programs that create opportunities for our students and level the playing field so that regardless of your financial background and look, our college is, is the very definition of what it means to have a university that's built on access, not exclusion. So it's a majority minority college. The majority of our undergraduates are first generation college students. 
more than 60% of our undergrads are from Pell eligible families. Um, and what we know is that even if you create access, the experience is not the same if you don't have these resources to do things like internships and study abroad and, and those sort of supplementary experiences. And the Watts investment allows us to, to level the playing field. We've also been able to create a set of endowed professorships, really important because we pride ourselves on the elite quality of our programs uh, right alongside the access. Indeed, I, I joke, uh, Watts College is ASU on steroids. It's the most diverse college. And at the same time, half of the programs in the, at ASU that are ranked in the top 10 are in Watts College. So you've got elite performance and the most democratic accessible college at the university. And so the Watts investment allows us to do both. And then the third thing, which in many ways is, in many ways is the real sort of heart of the college is to invest in the design studio for community solutions and what we call the one square mile initiative, which for the moment is focused on Maryvale. And this, this initiative sort of distills our commitment to solving problems in the community in a collaborative fashion. And the Watts investment sort of plants a flag and says, this is the heart of this college, this kind of community engaged solutions oriented work. Speaking about the heart of the college, you know, you've seen a lot of transformation, not only the renaming of the college, but I think that the students that you mentioned have changed a lot. I anticipate that even over the last 15 months, there's been a lot of change in the type of students that are drawn to public service and the opportunities offered through Watts. Can you talk to us about that? I don't know if uh, that's an interesting question, whether the type of students have changed. I can tell you that the number of students drawn to the college has changed. We're probably three times larger than uh, than we were than we were when I started as dean. Um, I think that I think that what what we have found is that there is a strong public service impulse among today's uh, today's students, and they are hungry for opportunities to gain the skills, the tools to make a difference in the world. It's not restricted to the Watts College students. Uh, as you know, we created the Public Service Academy over the last several years, which is a university-wide initiative. We've got students from 170 different majors. That same impulse is present in engineering students, business students, art students, nursing students, what have you. This impulse to make a difference. I think the biggest change among students today versus say, students of my generation is students want to do it now. They don't want to sit in class and learn for five years and then maybe, you know, work their way up the work their way up the ladder for another five or 10 years. They're ready to do it now. And they're confident that they can make a difference today. Some people disparage this as arrogance, like, oh, these kids today, they're ready for the executive suite the minute they graduate. And I'm like, eh, have you right. spoken to these students? I'm ready for them to be in the executive suite. They're, they're so smart and they're so well-spoken. I've spoken with many PSA students and I'm just constantly blown away by how self-possessed they are at such a young age. So I think it speaks to Absolutely. the program. Yeah, and and my, my, my take on it is this, like, all right, maybe there's a little bit of arrogance. You know what? I'll take that any day of the week um, if it comes with this passion and commitment and confidence that they're going to fix all the mistakes that the people that came before them have left for them to deal with. And so that to me, that's the difference with the students today is just the the eagerness and the readiness to roll up their sleeves and do stuff now. And you might even say an impatience uh, to get with it. Um, so we've tried to build our programs to take advantage of that, not to not to tamp it down or discourage it. Dean Capel, last question. And I know this is a difficult one to distill, but if you could go back and give uh, yourself advice from 10 years ago, what would you tell the Jonathan Capel of 2010 today? The only thing I guess I would say is don't, don't think that anything is out of bounds or off limits. I mean, I'm so impressed with what our faculty, our students, our staff, our community partners have been able to accomplish. Um, you know, I could go through everything from 
the Westward Ho, our work at the Human Services Campus on homelessness, our collaboration with police departments. We mentioned the Public Service Academy. We started a whole college in Hainan, China, where we now have a thousand students and graduated our first our first class. We created dozens of degree programs. Um, there is really nothing uh, that this that this incredible team is not capable of. And what I've said to folks in the what I've said to folks in the college is the greatest power <laughs> that I got to enjoy by being dean is that no matter what I came up with or whatever promises came out of my mouth, however goofy they were, um, I knew I had the best group of colleagues that would back up any of those uh, any of those promises. And we were working in a community, and I don't think people necessarily appreciate what we have going for us here in Arizona, um, that was receptive to all kinds of innovations, whether it's coming from the Lodestar Center uh, for Nonprofit or CERC, one of our terrific research centers. Like, no matter what we would cook up, we find community partners that are like, all right, let's give it a shot. Um, and so what I'd say to the what I'd say to the person in 2010 is don't think that idea is too audacious or don't think eh, I'm not sure we can pull that off. We can pull it off uh, because 2021 me has seen it <laughs> and uh, and can give you assurance that uh, that there is really not much that uh, that this group can't take on. I love that. And Dean Capel, on behalf of the ASU community, I want to thank you so much for how much you've given this community, not just the ASU community, the community at large, and wish you the best of luck in your new endeavors back east. And thank you for joining us on today's Devils in the Details. To our viewers, until next time, stay safe.